Hi, good afternoon. This is Chris again. I'm with uh, No Boundaries Marketing Group, and we are here to pick up on our COVID-19 Small Business Education Series. And today's class is uh, going to be discussing reopening your small business. So let's go ahead and get started. So a couple of things that we're going to cover in this session today, again, pretty basic, but we're trying to hopefully educate you or open your mind. So hopefully you can take some information from this session and apply it to your business today. Uh, but again, concepts like Google My Business, websites, online listings, you know, resources, tools for connecting, uh, and communication strategy. Those are all going to be really, really important things that we're going to talk about today. So to start off, um, we're going to kind of move this along pretty quick. So if you need to rewatch this, you know, we understand, you know, we're trying to keep this presentation to about 30 minutes if possible. So again, everybody can get back to work. But uh, to start this presentation off, as federal, state, and local restrictions start to ease and as small business owners, your, your first reaction might be to just jump and turn that open sign over. You know, you, you really want to think things through, though. What we're going to encourage you right now is to pause, take a break, develop a game plan. And I know that's easier said than done, but we're going to explain why it's important here in a minute. So you just have to understand that a lot of things have changed now in this post-coronavirus world. Um, it's not just about the federal, state, and local requirements. It's more about consumers, consumer sentiment, and how everybody's interacting moving forward. So again, um, just make sure we're going to give you some critical questions we encourage you to ask yourself. So um, easing restrictions. So the first thing to understand, this isn't a free-for-all. This isn't, you know, we're going back to the way that we used to do business. Um, this is just, this is a new world that we live in. So regardless of government restrictions, consumer spending has shifted drastically. Uh, it's fair to say the way that you did business before might not be the way you're doing it today or moving forward. So the most important thing for you to do as a business owner, and we've said this numerous, numerous times now, stay up to date on the requirements. You know, communicate, contact, engage with your local, state, and federal government agencies because those are the ones that are setting the policies moving forward. Again, that plays a big role into consumers here in a minute. We'll help you make that connection. But again, you gotta risk you gotta refer to trusted sources. Don't go to social media for your information. Avoid the news. You know, these are sources that put opinion into things, and we, we need to avoid that. You need to get information from trusted resources like the CDC, local chambers of commerce, official government websites, uh, associ business associations, uh, small business administration. These are places that you need to go that offer trusted resources. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is creating a plan. So there's no real easy way to talk about this. A plan requires you to do a lot of research and education. You're going to have to put some time into this. What we've put together is a series of questions that might be something you should ask yourself. Again, it's not all inclusive, but it'll help get you on the right path, or at least we hope it gets you on the right path uh, to figuring this whole thing out. So some current questions, you know, what are the local, state, and federal regulations? There's a lot of them, believe it or not. They vary from state to state. If you're a business that, you know, does business in, let's just say, Arizona and a variety of other states, you have a lot of questions to ask. But for those that are local and just do business here, again, you still need to make sure local restrictions, state restrictions, they all have a different recommendation. And, you know, just making sure that you're on the same page is important. Um are there any industry best practices out there? I mean, do you subscribe to any associations or chambers of commerce or anything like that? Believe it or not, tons of information out there on those websites. People that, industry experts that can offer you maybe a little more insight into things, now's the time to reach out to those guys. Now's the time to really engage and get the, your money's worth out of that membership, if you will. Um, so engage with those sources. Do you have a hygiene policy? And are your, is your staff up to date on what's expected of them? Believe it or not, that probably is a question that would normally not come up in your normal day-to-day. -day. But I tell you what, it might now, and that's important for your staff to be on the same page. There's nothing worse than you see you know, somebody maybe calling out an employee for not following the rules, and then all of a sudden online that becomes some viral thing about how XYZ business you know, doesn't care about their client's health or something like that. So last thing you want to be on the receiving end of, let's just say that. 
Um, other questions. Do you need any PPE equipment? Um, not just for you, not just for your staff, not just for your clients. It's for everybody. You know, do you uh, need to protect yourself from anything? Uh, do your clients, you know, lots of questions asked there. So maybe PPE equipment. You've never thought about using that before. I mean, uh, we've seen Chick-fil-A. We've seen retailers. You name it. They've come with extraordinary measures to safeguard their clients, their staff, and their employees. I mean, it's it's just amazing. So ask yourself that question. Um, how do you proper, how do you practice proper social distancing? Believe it or not, that's not as easy as you might think. So, you know, a lot of people don't understand the guidelines behind social distancing. They don't understand why they have to do it or what it really means. So educate yourself. What are the proper, what's the proper social distancing guideline that you need to follow for your business? Um, another big one, and I, this is probably one of the best ones I think we've put together was how do you enforce these policies? I pause there because that's a big question. You know, a lot of businesses say, well, I, I put a sign up on my wall. Um, I told my staff to do this and well, sorry, they didn't. Or whatever the case may be, that's not acceptable anymore. That's not gonna fly with consumers. And unfortunately, consumers have a big voice nowadays. Not only could there be, you know, restrictions or could be consequences from a government standpoint, but just from a social standpoint, you're going to be on the receiving end of a, a very negative thing. So do yourself a favor. You need to make sure that you understand how you're going to enforce these policies. Uh, next, how do you monitor your employee's health and what is your sick time policy? You know, a lot of questions. If you've never contacted an HR professional, you don't have one that, you know, you can reach out to. Now's the time. There's a lot of freelancers out there. And, you know, now's the time to maybe look at that employee handbook, setting expectations with employees that, you know, it's not okay to come into work sick. It's not okay uh, to spread that stuff here, you know, whereas not to say it was ever acceptable per se, but I mean, maybe something that was quietly ignored. Now it's going to become front and center. Now it's going to become top of mind that, hey, if an employee says they're sick, what do I do as a business owner? Um, next up, what are going to be my staffing needs when we reopen? That's a kind of a loose question. There's really not a good answer to that because a lot of people don't know. I mean, we're really shooting in the dark here as to how things are going to work. There's a lot of surveys out there that suggest maybe consumers aren't as ready as businesses are to reopen. Um, who knows? I mean, again, it, it's you, you know your clients best and you know what, you know, people have been feeling and saying. Um, so, you know, you're going to have to gauge that as best you can. But a lot of that can also come from your communication strategy, how you're you know, reaching out to clients, what type of advertising you're doing, so on and so forth. So there can be a lot of things with that. Um, next up is going to be how do you communicate with your staff, clients, and vendors that you're back open? Uh, what kind of messaging do you want to you know, convey? What is your strategy? How are you doing business now? There's so many things that you need to make sure that everybody understands. If vendors, you know, have a special time that they need to come do deliveries now, you got to set that up in advance. You got to let them know. Uh, clients, again, if your hours have changed, if, uh, you know, they have to ring a bell twice and knock on the door three times to come in. I mean, whatever the case may be, just you need to make sure that you're communicating that. And then again, to the staff, you know, what are the expectations moving forward? How are they to do business now? How are they to greet clients or so on and so forth? Um, you know, Home Depot, if you look at them, I, I bring them up because <laughs> went in there the other weekend and, you know, they have an incredible process to get inside and long line and they only allow a certain number of people into the store, so on and so forth. And, you know, hats off to them for really taking consumer safety into, you know, their own hands and making that work with their situation. I mean, that probably was no easy process to develop by any means, but you know what? They're doing it. They're doing the best they can. And so, you know, you got to you got to really give it to them for trying at least. Um, other things to consider, do you have any foreseeable future, you know, supply chain impacts? Uh, that's a tough one. You know, you don't really necessarily know, but now's the time to talk to those vendors. You know, is everything in order? You know, you hear, okay, there could be slowing deliveries from China, this and that, manufacturing not keeping up, uh, so on and so forth. There's a lot of questions to ask there. So reach out to your vendors and ask them. And then in turn, communicate those expectations to consumers. Make sure that can, your staff, your consumer, your customers, they know what to expect in the future because that way they can plan accordingly. Um, and then other things are, our last one would be, you know, do you have any promotional messaging? You know, we, we push a lot using free applications like Canva, so on and so forth to, you know, create some dynamic images. But 
you know, that's really an opportunity. Create that promotional message now on how you want to do business, how you want consumers to engage with you, what opportunities exist. Maybe you're not offering this, but you're offering this. Like McDonald's, they, they are only offering a limited menu right now. So, I mean, that's, again, an opportunity that they put out that how they do business now. Uh, next up, voice of the consumer. So this is an important concept that we wanted to really touch on today because, you know, we're all sitting on edge in one way or the other, whether we're a business and wanting to open or a consumer, you know, worrying about our safety. It, the voice of the consumer is super, super important. One thing is for certain, you need to make sure your business is viewed in a positive light right now and not associated with the negativity surrounding the coronavirus. So we talked about that before, again, to that rogue employee who's not following a hygiene policy or whatever the case may be. You don't want to be on the receiving end of that battle. You really, really, really want to take that seriously. Um, you know, communication is key, but more so the voice of that consumer you know, their negative review, how they, you know, blast your business on social media, there can be a lot of repercussions. And, you know, that this is just something that is so easily avoided that, you know, it's worth the extra effort. So again, voice of the consumer is going to become something more and more important as we go on here. Um, after this, you know, we reopen everything. Um, reviews are one of the most pop powerful avenues that a consumer has to, you know, give information out about your business. Um, it's one that businesses need to take more responsibility for. There's a lot of businesses, and I would venture to say the majority of business owners, they don't respond to those positive or negative reviews online. It's, you know, hey, thanks for leaving me the review, but they don't actually go onto the Google My Business page or the Yelp page, and they don't actually respond to those reviews. Whether it's positive or negative, this is your opportunity to engage, and you need to do that. Make sure you, you show appreciation for those who took time out of their day to leave you a positive review. If it's a negative review, take time out of your day to respond to that. Make sure you get the last word in and make sure your business is viewed in a light that is, again, turning that negative negative situation into something positive. A simple response to the effect of, you know, I'm sorry, Mr. And Mrs. Smith, for your experience. Obviously, we take customer service, you know, uh, very seriously. Uh, we would like to make this situation right for you. Please reach out to our you know, business tomorrow and, you know, let's discuss this for, I mean, you can see, and however you word it is, you can see how you can take something very negative and turn it right back around so that the next time somebody looks at that review, it's not so daunting. It's not so, oh man, what happened here? You know, again, you as the business owner, you take customer service seriously and you tried to make it right. That's what they're going to see. Um, so on reviews, again, we really kind of talked about this, but, you know, reviews can make or break. You know, pay attention to the current safety information about reopening your business. I can't stress that enough. I'm going to probably say it 10 more times. You really, really, really need to pay attention to that because, again, all it takes is one consumer to call you out on it, and then it becomes something viral. You just don't need that negativity right now. Respond to every review. You know, make sure that consumer knows that they're appreciated and that you want to do business with them. Um, so on communication, let's talk about that strategy here. So communication is going to be one of the single most important things you do post COVID-19. Sadly, consumers have found a new way to do business, and that is e-commerce. You know, I've seen statistics that show, you know, 100 you know, plus percent increases and this and that. And, you know, it's great for those businesses. I mean, congratulations. But you know, it's been on the backs of small businesses now. And so it's time to reclaim that traffic. The way that you're going to do that is, again, it's all about that communication strategy. You need to you need to facilitate. You need to work with your clients, your your staff. You need to develop a communication strategy that will help pull them back in and not push them back towards e-commerce. So, again, develop strategy with your staff. Make sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out to your customers, you know, ask them what they think about something, get their opinion. You know, that is a huge engagement tool I think is really underutilized from businesses. Um, number two, to communicate a consistent message with your clients and reinforce that it's safe to do business with you. That's the big key term coming up is safety. It's safe to do business with me. Uh, communicate to your clients how you do business now, what to expect when they come to your store. Again, we talked before about 
you know, uh, do you have a product that's no longer in stock because you can't, you know, get it or whatever the case may be, you know, so really pay attention to that stuff. Now is your time to communicate that. And then again, make sure your website, your Google My Business and all these listings are up to date. These are communication platforms. These are messaging tools for you and to get across information to your clients. More so than anything, make sure that website is up to date. Make sure that you have exactly what you need on there and that it's detailed. You know, this is your resource. This is your, your platform again to connect with consumers. So make sure that it's up to date. Um, customer service. This is another one that I think is really important and maybe, you know, kind of goes, you know, without saying, but, you know, customer service is key. We can't, you know, people are on edge right now. That's, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of uncertainty. So the businesses that go the extra mile, you're going to be rewarded. That That's just really all there is to it. I know that, you know, even for me personally, I've been, I've done business with several people here. Really. I mean, obviously my world didn't stop. So, you know, we've been out to eat, we ordered takeout, we've gone to the store, we've done what we've, you know, what we've needed to, you know, basically stock our house and so on and so forth. And I'll tell you what, there's been some tremendous, tremendous service involved in that. I mean, even down to our grocery stores, I know that, you know, these people are working their tails off and, you know, it's just, it. I can give countless examples, but again, that's going to earn business moving forward. I know it certainly has for me. It's something that I haven't forgotten. And so I guarantee you can probably remember back to a, a scenario where somebody went that extra mile for you. And obviously you remembered it. So think about that. That's going to be critical now more than ever. Um, time to up the marketing game. This is really what a lot of people have, you know, attended this or are attending this event or this seminar for. We saved it for last because it's important to touch on those other things first before we really get this because that's what's going to make the your marketing game plan more effective. So whether you pulled back on your marketing or, you know, you increased it, whatever you did, it, it now it's time to focus. Now it's time to really dig down deep and put this together and to get you to that next level. Because believe me when I say, again, consumer spending hasn't stopped. It's People are still spending money out there. They still need product. They still need service. So this is your opportunity to reclaim that client base back because right now it's more or less a free-for-all. Consumers, truthfully, they don't know who's open for business, who's not open for business. Uh, did my financial advisor, did he just decide to retire and now I need to look for somebody else? I mean, there's so many questions out there you got to ask yourself. And so consumers are just in this, what do I do mode? So let's, let's tell them what to do. So make sure the first and foremost, we've talked to, again, I beat this, you know, consistently to you is got to make sure everything's up to date. Social media channels, listings, websites, it all has to communicate a consistent message. You need to develop promotional material to lure past, present and future clients to your business. The way that you do this, simple programs, Canva, you can go create a, a they already have the dimensions in there for, you know, Facebook post and all this other stuff, make sure you take the time. This is super easy to do. It is time consuming. I get that. If you can't do it, you don't, you know, have the time or ability, you need to hire somebody to do that. And I know that can be tough to do right now too, but it's really, really important to make sure that you have consistent information and promotional material out there to get these clients to come back to you. Dynamic visuals, quality pieces. I mean, this is going to be so important for you moving forward. Um, next up is going to be targeting consumers that are searching for your products and services already. These are your low hanging fruit. Like we've said, consumers didn't stop spending. They just found a new way to spend. So now it's time to realign them with your products and services. It's time to go out there and say, you know, Hey, if I'm a plumber, people are still searching for plumbing. If I'm a retail shop or a, a, a snowboarding shop or a UTV dealer, I mean, you need to just make sure that people understand how it is that to do business with you. And you need to make sure you're targeting them as a business. Again, these are people searching for you. So pay-per-click, social media, there's a lot of avenues to go. We'll talk about them individually in a minute, but get that low hanging fruit. And then again, develop a 30, 60, 90 plan. 30, 60, 90 is just what I'm going to be doing 30 days. What am I going to do in 60 days? What am I going to be doing in 90 days? And the reason why we say 30, 60, 90 is because it gives you something to look forward to. 90 days, three months, that's a decent amount of time to start getting measurable results. So again, for the next 30 days, I'm maybe going to post every single day on social media about this, this, and this. And when you accomplish that, okay, in the next 30 days, I'm going to keep doing that, but I'm also going to incorporate this into it. And then in 90 days, we're going to do this, this, and this. So, you know, you have these plans in place to develop that data that you need to determine 
what's working, what's not, and how you're, cons how you're basically targeting consumers. Uh, next up is social media. So uh, that is going to prove extremely valuable here moving forward. There's a lot of resources, a lot of things out there. So for the next six months, social media is not just about lead generation. It's actually going to be about branding and communication. So repetition is key. The more times consumers see your brand, the more likely they are to engage with it. Again, back to those dynamic visuals, try to personalize the message. And really, when we say personalize, we, we really refer to humanizing the brand. You know, people need to understand the vast majority of people employed in the U.S. are employed by small businesses. Well, let's celebrate that. This is your family, your friends. You know, a lot of people rely on you as a small business to earn a paycheck, to, you know, buy groceries, so on and so forth. And so. It's not just about me, you know, this, I'm supporting a community here. So pay-per-click. So whew, that's a topic that some people cringe at when they hear, but I'll tell you what, it really does spell dollar signs for those who do it effectively. Pay-per-click is not just for lead generation. It's a great, it's actually a phenomenal branding tool. Imagine if somebody searches for, you know, a plumbing contractor and here it is, you know, maybe they already have somebody in mind, but you know what, they see a, the first thing that comes up is, you know, Bob Smith's plumbing. And, you know, it just, again, whether or not they're going to use that, it still resonates. And so, you know, you obviously want a little bit more favorable terms than that. Most of the time you're, you're going more for the lead generation side, but don't dismiss the other secondary services that pay-per-click offers. Um, remember targeting people who are already looking for your products and services. So it's, it's not like you're throwing a, a hook out there and hoping to catch the big fish. These are actually people that are looking for what you do. You just need to let them know, Hey, I'm open. Here's how I'm doing business. And so again, that's an oversimplification. We can talk about strategy one-on-one -on -one if you have questions about that, but you know, just food for thought, pay-per-click phenomenal resource right now. Uh, the next one, search engine optimization. So it's more of a long-term strategy. This isn't something that's going to, you know, yield results within 30 or 60 days, but you know, 90 days in the long term, you're going to see some results and that's what's going to put you miles ahead of your competition in the long run. So again, if you're in a position that you can afford it, SEO is a phenomenal investment. We highly recommend it to our clients. Um, and again, it targets those same low hanging fruit, people looking for your products and services. But again, this is in the map section in the organic results, not the paid ads like pay-per-click. So if you need more clarification, just give us a call, but uh, that's an oversimplification of it. There's a lot to do with SEO, but um, for all intents and purposes here, we'll keep it to that. Uh, next up, email marketing. So we've talked about this one before as well. You know, having a consistent message, communicating to your clients is important. Uh, it's important to have some barriers with that. You know, we like to we like to make sure that people understand you can't and you, most consumers don't want to be emailed every single day on something. Um, you know your customers best. You know how frequently they would like to receive it. Just make sure your message is consistent and there's quality in it. When we say quality, we mean that you make sure you have quality content. You know, don't just throw an email out there to throw an email out. Make sure that there's something meaningful in there. Whether it's a product review, client testimonial, there's tons of things that you can send out via email marketing. Um, they don't have to be giant newsletters. In fact, newsletters are really a thing of the past. Um, most businesses, most statistics show you they just don't create engagement anymore. Um, you're much better off writing blog posts on your website and then syndicating your blog posts through email. But again, another concept we can talk about at a later time. But just make sure you're you're sending out good information. You're sending out great you know quality information. Uh, to your consumers consistently. So whether that be once a week, once every other week, once a month, just again, give consumers what they want. And that's, you know, email marketing. Next up is video. We, again, now is not the time to be shy. Um, <laughs> we, it's time to get your staff in front of the camera. It's time to showcase why someone should do business with you and get the hell off Amazon. Because I'll tell you what, e-commerce, like we said, is blown up and you got to remind people, Hey, this is who I am. This is what I bring to the table. And this is what I do. Sometimes it's not enough just to read. You know, really a lot of consumers don't want to read as much as they used to. Some do. So don't dismiss it. Uh, but again, those videos are super powerful. So, you know, get out there, get in front of a camera. Don't be afraid to do this. Uh, you know, we're, we're hypocrites sometimes too. I hate being in front of a camera, but sometimes it's necessary. And now it's one of those times, you know, we're going to be doing some live demonstrations or live, um, uh, sessions here with the Glendale Chamber of Commerce 
uh, coming up. So, you know, those are just things to think about here. Get in front of a camera and help showcase your products and services. Get your staff out there. Get a testimonial. So many opportunities with video. So don't let that go to waste. Uh, last but certainly not least is going to be the online listing. So, you know, we've really beat this up quite a bit. You know, you got to get out there, you know, MapQuest. I, ironically, I just had a client the other day and he was so frustrated because he goes out and he booked an appointment with a client, super excited about it. And next thing you know, um, for whatever reason, the address listed on one of his online listings, I think it was TomTom, Tom, which is what I think it's Bing or, you know, one of those services used it was incorrect. It was his old address. And so the client ended up going to the old address, which has a competitor there. And guess what? That was not a good deal. I mean, that that just was a horrible customer experience. So it's worth getting out there, <clears throat> updating your online listings, making sure that everything's accurate. So again, you don't run into simple, stupid situations like that. Also, it's a reviews platform. You know what? If a consumer, for whatever reason, still uses Tom Tom or MapQuest or whatever else out there, you know, let them do what they do, you know, and give them that avenue to make sure that they can leave positive feedback there because you've wowed them with customer service. So online listings, very underrated, but super important. So um, that pretty much concludes everything. Again, we tried to keep this as close to 30 minutes as we could. Hopefully you learned something new today. So hopefully you've learned something you can take and apply to your business. If you have any questions, anything that we can help with, we stress this every time, you know, don't be afraid to reach out. Advice is free. We really, really genuinely want to help. Give us a call. We can go over your situation, your scenario. Maybe you have a simple question. There are no stupid questions out there. Give us a call. We're here to help. Our number is 602-377-7773, or you can visit our website at noboundaries.marketing. So thanks for attending today, and I hope you have a great day.